I like to finish up the stoichiometry unit with my students by asking them to problem solve their way through a question like this. Hey, here's some cobalt uh, chloride, but you know it's a hydrated co compound, and I don't know what that number is in front of the water, which is called the water of crystallization or the water of hydration. Can you calculate that number given this information? That I've got 4.82 grams of that compound originally, and here's what I do that compound. I take it, that, that mass of that sample right there, put it into an evaporating dish, put it onto a hot plate, and cook it up. And then after a certain amount of time, I weigh and then reweigh the chemical until the mass doesn't change anymore, and I get a new mass after cooking it of 2.63 grams. Given that information, can you calculate the water of hydration for that cobalt 2 chloride? Okay, so how do you do that? Well, there's two quantities here that are actually known, and once you do find those two quantities in terms of, what's the key, moles, you'll be able to do a ratio, just like you did with empirical formulas, to be able to come up with the water of crystallization or hydration. How do you do it? Well, okay, if I've got 2.63 grams of compound, sorry I wrote it that way, compound, compound and the compound is CO, CO, Cl2, after I cook this compound, there's no more water in it. That's the whole idea. The water is the thing that evaporates, and so I've got this mass of that chemical left over after heating. If I take the molar mass of that chemical, which is going to be a number in grams of COCl2 per one mole of COCl2, and that molar mass is going to be 129.83, 129.83, I actually get 0 decimal 02025. I'll do significant digits later, don't worry about it. Moles of COCl2. That's the number of moles of that that I have after I evaporate the water. What's the difference between the mass of that chemical before heating and after heating? The mass of the water that took off. And so if you subtract 4.82, you subtract from that 2.63, you're going to get 2.19 grams of water. When you find the moles of water by taking the molar mass of water, which is 18.02 grams of water for every one mole of H2O. Look how I always write those H2Os and everything for unit cancellation purposes. I just do a good job just to show you always that's what you're supposed to do. Do it. Your teacher's going to love that. You're going to get good marks. Okay. When you do that math right there, you get 0 decimal, 1, 2, and I think it's 1, 2, 1, 5 moles of water. Now look, what is this? You just got two mole numbers here. Yeah, but what you've got is, remember, all formulas are a ratio, and this one is, look at the ratio here, and forget this 4.82 grams in front for just a second, look at the formula. One of these for every how many of these, because you know that most of these chemicals, although some of them do have twos in front and stuff like that, most of them are one of these to how many of those. So what you're going to do is, you're going to figure out what the ratio is of this to this. The water number will always be higher in terms of moles, so you'll divide this one into this one, unless they're both the same, and then it's just one to one. Do you know what I mean? So here's the thing. When you take 0 decimal, 1, 2, 1, 5, moles of H2O, and you divide it by 0 decimal 02025 moles of COCOCl2, the ratio of that to that is 6 waters to 1 COCl2. That's the ratio that you get here. What does that mean? That means that this is called cobalt 2, cobalt 2 chloride, because that's the CO with a 2 positive charge, hexa hydrate. Nice, hey?